Hello and welcome to Computer Tech and More. Today we got a pretty short one. I'm going to be upgrading my Samsung here. It's an 850 Evo, one terabyte, to this uh, T Force uh, A440 Pro. So basically, what happened is uh, I went about uh, wanting to change out my. Uh, I'm slowly converting my old uh, 2.5 inch SSDs to uh, NVMe ones. And uh, I was just going to do my OS one and do a copy over, but somewhere along the line, it decided to corrupt this hard drive. And now it no longer works with that computer. Uh, it, I was able to extract the data, luckily, by plugging it into a different machine. But on the original, even after reforming it, it's completely uh, non-functional. We're going to do a disassemble um, after I get this new one up and running, all just in this video. But let's uh, focus in on... Uh, this SSD with a quick open box. So first and foremost, why this T-Force? Well, it was fairly well reviewed online with um, some professionals like um, like Tom's Hardware and StorageReview.com, those kind of places uh, where they do a lot of extensive testing on SSDs for like longevity and how long the read writes are, how long it's able to maintain speed, the latency, all that kind of fun stuff. And this isn't a top performer. It's sort of average, while well, in the um, PCI Express Gen 4, right there. But it does have DRAM, which was a requirement of mine, uh, because then you don't need to use system memory and it operates more efficiently overall. You do pay a little bit extra for it, but this was, um, when I bought it, $219.99. and like 99 cents. So it was the cheapest with DRAM. There were more expensive ones that didn't have DRAM. So it just kind of uh, hit all the bells and whistles. And, and it should still be direct storage um, capable, which was another requirement of mine. So, uh, since storage going forward, I'm going to be using this as my game one. And I have another 4 terabyte SATA SSD that's going to now be like uh, backup stuff uh, within my desktop. But that is just how I'm using it. So take a look at the box. You got Gen 4 PCI Express. If you plug it into a Gen 3, it's going to operate at Gen 3 speeds. This is operating temperature range, the voltage on it, uh, crystal disk mark score. We're going to be testing that out because that is something I can do. English, a little bit of installation on it. Uh, not too much product information. I suppose I should uh, bring up the web page. So I'll do that. This is the team group website. And we have the Cardia A440 Pro and some basic spec information. Let's zoom in a little bit. So it does come in apparently eight terabyte. I didn't see the, any eight terabytes on Amazon, but your mileage may vary. Four terabyte, two, and one. I am using this for game storage, so I wanted the larger capacity, and at $219, I think I said, the price is basically right. And let's go to the specifications. And this one was very key for me, the DRAM terabytes written so that's how much uh, how many terabytes can be written to it before you um, basically the drive is non-functional performance ratings the weight I'll let you explore the website if you are very curious about checking it out in detail so I do believe that this is TCL as opposed to uh, QCL. Um, basically, that's just the number of bits that are used in each of the um, the memory on it for storage. So uh, single cell is faster than double cell, double cell is faster than triple cell, triple cell is faster than quad cell in general. So a lot of these SSDs, this one included, uh, can convert part of the memory into... Um, is it single or double? I'm, I can't remember offhand. And uh, so it allows it to operate faster, and then it'll offload that as um, it basically sits idle in the computer. But uh, that cache is only temporary, and once it's full, then it, you'll see the SSD speeds drop as it transitions to the lower speeds. But there we are. We'll take it out. If I can take it out safely. There we go. And there it is. What's that? Oh, a little 
uh, heat spreader. I guess they're calling that a heat sink. Um, oh, there. Oh, that's interesting. So it's just got the sticker on the bottom, and then all the cool stuff is on this side. I didn't even flip it over. So we got a Fizon. Am I saying the names right? Fizon. Fizon. Uh, for the chip, for the controller, and the. I'm reading it through my screen. Well, for the life of me, I am unable to make out what it says on it. Um, if you're really curious, it's on real websites that are more devoted to uh, storage reviews than me. But um, I will probably use this heat spreader and then uh, hook it up into my computer. And uh, I guess now we'll do the installation process. So I'm not an NVMe expert, so I do apologize if I'm talking nonsense, but I was taking a closer examination and it does look like that this is a double stacked NVMe and by that I'm referring to memory chips on both sides. So it may not fit in a laptop. Um, so you, you do need to watch out for that kind of uh, specification here for whether it'll fit inside your particular computer application. Okay, a little bit of installation. So I didn't want to take off my cooler. Luckily, my screwdriver could fit. To remove this panel, um, need to be gentle. It is wired in for RGB. My motherboard here is pretty cool in that it has a thermal pad on the bottom and it will have a thermal pad on this side as well. So it's great for those double-sided um, NVMe drives. All right, we're going to install it. All right, there's the NVMe. It's installed, although, well, the thermal pad is upside down. Not that it matters. It's going to be covered by this. And on my motherboard, this one is PCI Express Gen 4 um, by 4, direct to the CPU. This one would share lanes with the GPU. So I'd lose, it would bring 16 down to 8 to get this 4, and then uh, one of the, I think this one at the bottom, would turn to a 4 instead of a 2. And then this one is a by 4 Gen 3, so this is my primary. And then we have another one that shares bandwidth with the SATA drives. All right, and there it is, installed again. Next step, get the GPU in. Let there be life. Yes, the RGB is way back there, and it doesn't matter. I can't even see it unless I'm in this specific view. All right, and here it is. PCI Express 4x4 NVMe. There's my new OS disk 3x4. It is in theory capable of doing PCI just Gen 4, just future capability. Let's do some speed tests. This is kind of for me to run both SSDs at the same time to see if there are any bandwidth limitations. up task manager here we see the two SSDs maxed out so I do apologize I'm not using OBS just this is for ease of use there are some temperatures with the SSDs while they're running crystal disk And obviously not really any slowdowns. And here's the final result. About 7,000 megabits per second for the Team Force A440. And at Gen 3 speeds, the 980 Pro. That makes a lot of sense. The thermals. 56 degrees C on the Team Force. 
and the Samsung at 43 degrees. And now for the comparison. These are all the different SSDs that I've owned and or own, depending on which one it is. Some of them have been retired, you know, wore out, that kind of thing. So right here at the bottom, we have the Team Force, uh, or Team Group T Force A440 Pro. It is by far the fastest SSD that I've used, but of course it is also the only uh, Gen 4, or PCI Express Gen 4 uh, one that I have. The 980 Pro is operating as though it was PCI Express Gen 3, just because that's where it is in the motherboard. So you can see directly where it compares, and this is the uh, formatting that it was using in Crystal Disk Mark. So they're all pretty much comparable apples to apples. This is the next sequential test, Q1 T1, and you can see where the different SSDs rank. Now, not all of them were tested using this formatting, so that's why some of them were left blank, but they're in here for uh, sanity's sake, basically. They're old enough that I changed the way that the test was run, so that's why they're missing. And the data was in them for the other test, where I hadn't changed anything yet. So, once again, we see that the A440 is by far the fastest, but again, it's also operating at a higher speed limit. While the 980 Pro is operating faster than the other Gen, Gen 3 by 4 uh, SSDs. Next, we are on to random testing. There's the A440 again, and kind of interestingly with random testing, the 980 Pro bandwidth is not a limitation here. This is purely how good the silicon is and the um, the chip that's inside of it, the uh, what's it called, the like processor uh, chipset ins inside of it, for how effectively it's able to coordinate the data inside of it. And it's pretty clear that the newer SSDs here are better able to handle that transition than Many of the older ones I have, such as the SK Hynix that's actually in my laptop, and the uh, Gen 3 uh, Rocket, well it's not Gen 3, but it's a Gen 3 speed uh, Rocket 2 terabyte. It's not the Rocket Pro, it's the, the blue one in terms of coloring. And which one else? Oh, a Western Digital Black, 500 gigabytes, so that was its nomenclature, operating much slower. So it's good to see that things are improving along the way. And next we have random... Q1, T1, and the speeds again drop, and again it just is a demonstration for how good it's able to, each SSD is able to handle uh, randomized reads and writes. And well, that's it for this part. Before we get into the next part where I tear down, I want to do the scores that I got with uh, 3D Mark Storage Benchmark. So you can see the different drives that are listed right here in this column. So I have a uh, Samsung, uh, 350 Evo in here. I have a uh, uh, Samsung, I don't know what model that is, it came with the laptop. The T4, the 980 Pro, the that came with the, um, the uh, ROG laptop I have, uh, Sabrinth um, Rocket version 1, gen, it's a Gen 3 drive the Samsung A50 Pro, and the Fire CUDA. So we do have two Gen 4s, but one of them is operating in Gen 3. And then this is Gen 3, this is Gen 3. I know I'm highlighting on the screen. And then we have a couple uh, SATA-based ones. So this gives you an idea of just how much faster or slower certain things are. And the scores are actually kind of surprising for some of these, actually. So we do see that the two newest NVMEs have the highest scores, but interestingly enough, the Gen 3s that are in the laptops are operating at much closer performance score to what I saw with the SATA-based ones, uh, with like the access times and the load times for the various games being much more similar. Uh, why that is, I have no idea, because in my performance testing, like we just saw, they're quite a lot different. So it could just very well be the way games load versus um, like transferring data, which is one of the key notes that if you're still using SATA-based SSDs, unless something is wrong with it, there's no reason to swap over unless you're building a new system, basically. Um, although I will say the two newest ones are significantly faster than the rest. And um, I'll leave this up for a couple more seconds. We can see the uh, record gain times, the load times, the, um, what's that? Um, latency. So they're, they're 
running pretty spiffy, pretty fast. And the other kind of spec information there at the bottom. All right, let's go to the Lex a little bit. Okay, now we're on to the disassembly. So I've actually never disassembled an SSD before. I know there's lots of them online, but um, you know, I wanted to do it myself. So first thing I did was I located where the uh, screws were and I just popped a little hole in there. Now I would say don't do this if um, your, warrant, your uh, SSD is still in warranty. I checked mine, mine expired like three years ago. So uh, no real uh, qualms there about that. So, you know, you just need to get the wrapper out. Okay, we did the hard one first. Then the easy one, take that off. And let's see, did I get them all? All right, well, I missed one and it's right there. Just need to clear out some of the wrapper. So, I don't know, you could just peel off the wrapper and that would be fine. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <clears throat> and this is what a SATA based SSD looks like. Mind, this is the Samsung one and this is like 2014. So, you know, it's just kind of an interesting thing there. Uh, my zoom changed, so it's Samsung. We got some memory modules. Looks like it's got a DRAM chip on it. Some more memory on it. And that was metal. So when this was in here, it kind of sat on there like that. There were the plugs. <clears throat> like old SATA ones actually ran so much cooler than modern NVMe ones. That's really funny. So I'm not, I'm, I don't think that actually synced, in, synced into the metal plate. So this shows how much extra space there was back in the day. But also this was much more expensive than like the four terabyte that I just bought. So prices have come down a lot. Um, yeah, so with that, I'm going to wrap up this video, call it an end. Thank you very much for joining on me on this journey as I uh, upgrade my SSD, walk you through kind of the overall process, and a disassembly of an old one. Uh, thank you much, have a great day, subscribe for more content, and see you next time here on Computer Tech and more.